It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back as we continue our health discussion this morning, but from a slightly different perspective. Many of us have our own furry friends at home that are literally part of our families. However, dogs are so much more than just companions. We've proven that on this show countless times. Dogs are incredibly smart and intuitive creatures that are able to learn how to assist and support people with various medical uh, conditions such as blindness, we know autism, deafness and mobility issues to name just a few. Well this morning we are joined by Lucy Breitenbach, the director and founder of Honey's Garden for Medical Alert Dogs South Africa as she shares her extensive knowledge on this fascinating matter and is brought through the supermodel of service dogs. Kelly is so beautiful and a little obsessed with you and her treats. Yeah. It's a little treat. I would welcome Lucy. Great to have you here. Thank you for having me. Lucy, I was just sharing that my knowledge with um, interaction with service dogs and even as far as guide dogs was very limited until I got to university where service dogs were on campus and with, you know, with their owners. What, what it, at, how extensive is the training process for a doggo like Kelly? And do all of them pass and become service dogs? Gosh, it's a very extensive training program. They can train anything up to two years um, to become a full medical service dog. Um, some of them don't pass, no. They haven't all got all the skills necessary, but if they don't pass, we do find them good homes as well. But, um, but yeah, it can take up to two years to train sure. them. I mean, I've been lucky enough to, to really bond with a number of different breeds, and the great joy of dogs is how different each breed is. And I would imagine each kind of genetic predisposition comes with a, a certain kind of ability in various fields. Are certain breeds more adept at dealing with certain medical conditions? How do you kind of work out, or, or do all dogs have the potential to be service dogs? So not all dogs have the potential to be service dogs, unfortunately. But we don't go by... Um, breed specifics we more look at the personality of the dog right. the um, the body shape and style of the dog for that condition depending on what they're going to be doing as tasks um, but yeah we use anything from pedigree his spaniels uh, labradors german shepherds golden retrievers right down to um, rescue dogs bruckies africanus oh. sight hounds we have a full range of different types of dogs but we um, we select them based on their personality they have to be confident have good work ethic and want to please their person all the time um, and yeah, be, be trainable and willing to work, really. Yeah. yeah. I'm seeing the little bib that Kelly is wearing and it says, do not touch. When it comes to working uh -oh. with a service dog, for someone watching, you see the dog, you get excited. What is the etiquette around a service dog? Don't touch the service dog, please. Um, it, it really does distract them. And um, unless the person that is handling them allow, says to the dog, you can say hello, then in that case, it's okay. But um, majority of the time it's best not to touch them or make noises at them and we get a lot of people do trying to yeah, <laughs> trying to get their Are attention you, can you ask the owner if you're allowed to touch because you, i'm you just can. It, i struggle with that i i really really do especially when they are so ridiculously beautiful and cute yeah. as that yeah. no but i get that because they've trained their their mind as much as they their physical responses to do a particular job and if you're going to constantly distract them in that process you're doing a major disservice uh, how do we link the right person to the right dog? How does this process actually work? Sure, so um, it's quite an intricate matching process. So um, we have to really get to know the family that the dog is required for, um, the specific person as well as their lifestyle, their working commitments, their other people living in their household, other dogs, pets living in their household. Um, and then we match the characters of the dogs we have to those people. Um, also their ability to, to do the work because a lot of these people have completely invisible diseases um, that they live with lifelong and they, but they, they're normal people. They yeah. go out, some people go out hiking, some people work in an office all day, some people, some kids are still at school. So we need to match the right personality of the dog to that lifestyle, okay. which is quite tricky. Um, we don't always get it right, but um, most of the time we do. And we, um, we work very closely with the family to make sure that it is the right dog for them, um, for their needs, yeah. And added to that, you put countless hours of work into to train these amazing puppies. 
Pops, you are beautiful. Stop yeah. making eyes at me, and I'm not allowed to come over there and cuddle you. I promise you, I would be definitely doing that. Um, Lucy, thank you so much for the work that you are doing on behalf of everyone that you've helped. Thank you. Thank you so much. You can you. follow at Medical Alert Dogs or go to medicalalertdogs.co.za to find out more. Possibly, if you are looking for a little assistance, get some information. Most importantly, if you want to support the amazing work that they are doing, that's where you can find out exactly how to do that.